This is a production of La Boheme that I was in. Mimi, a role that I loved singing very, very much. My, my most famous week at Gelsenkirchen was in 1958, I believe it was. Yes, I think. Yes, 58. Um, I had a week of from hell, actually, but I didn't know it at the time. On Monday, I sang Julietta in The Tales of Hoffman. On Tuesday, I sang Minnie in The Girl of the Golden West. On Wednesday, Julietta. On Thursday, Minnie. On Friday, Julietta. On Saturday, Minnie. And on Sunday, I sang Julietta twice. <laughs> and the last opera that was on my schedule there was Wozzeck. And the reason why I say it was the last opera was because I chose not to renew my contract because I was getting married. And um, going back to Los Angeles to get married to Henry Lewis, my mother was very much against the marriage because um, Henry is black. In 1960, that was a very, very big deal to have a mixed marriage. And my mother was by then a widow, and she truly, I think, felt that her world was going to come crashing around her shoulders. And so she did not come to the wedding. But I consider that Henry really put together the final years of vocal study. He did great um, delving and seeking and reading and writing cadenzas and uh, really, really working hard. Marilyn had an enormous natural gift, but she also had an, a, an, a, a tremendous ability to work and to try to improve. And I think that's always the answer of someone who is who is is truly great. It's it's on it's on on top of a of an enormous gift to then have the ability to to work and and cultivate. And she worked, and we cultivated a, a technique that stood in her instead for what what is it forty five years now? She's been you know the career was a, was that long, which is extremely unusual, as you know.
Il maggiore contributo della Horn alla musica è la diffusione del repertorio per mezzo soprano di compositori come Rossini. Nel 1960 sposa il direttore d'orchestra Henry Lewis, con il quale resterà per 14 anni e avrà una figlia, Angela. Dopo il matrimonio interpreta un ruolo da soprano nel Wozzeck di Alban Berg, Marie. That's the uh, Bible scene from Wozzeck, where she sings Marie. That was like the, 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 the change in her career. Because she, she first did it in Gelsenkirchen, but it was the first thing that she was invited to sing in Berlin and Frankfurt, and she started making a guess, and eventually she was invited to San Francisco to sing Marie. Uh, and incidentally, uh, in the same season, she sang uh, um, Nedda in Pagliacci and, and Musetta and... and uh, all those other roles that uh, 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 were essentially associated with sopranos. In my day, we were trained, as I said, like boy sopranos, and um, then with puberty arrived this other whole octave. An octave is eight notes, right? Uh, on the bottom of my voice, which meant that I suddenly had this lower voice, which I did nothing to achieve. It just arrived because now I was so-called young woman. And, um, but I still continued to sing soprano. So the soprano is the higher range and the more brilliant quality of the female voices. And the mezzo-soprano is exactly what it is, half soprano, <laughs> which means it's half soprano and therefore does not maybe go up quite as high as the sopranos sing and then gets down into a an even lower register than the sopranos, but predominantly sings in the middle part of the voice and should have a quality of sound that, we'll say, goes more towards a woodwind sound of an oboe rather than the woodwind sound of a flute. <laughs> When she had been a soprano, the lower and middle had this rich gift, and then the upper voice that she sang with in Gelsenkirchen in those days when she sang soprano parts, the upper voice was something different, was narrower and, and, and smaller. But she found that in, by singing these mezzo parts, where she didn't have to stay in the high tessitura, she could develop the upper register from that middle register, and with that same dark quality, And the trick, of course, is to do that without losing any brilliance and without losing a, a, a force, which took us some time of, 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 of daily practicing and exercises. One is, not a, you know, one, one is not accustomed to hearing a voice of that size, being able to move, have the flexibility that she has. I think that is what has made her unique. I mean, you, you, used to, you think of, of, of a coloratura voice, you think of a much lighter sound. But when you hear Marilyn, you hear the size of this voice and the, and the fact that she, that it, it moves so it, with such ease, it's, uh, that's, that's what really has separated her from everybody. Mm -hmm. 